The Adventures of Herr Schnitzel Nazi Part 2 The Toilet Hand This story took place probably about four gaming sessions deep into our campaign. By this point, we had discovered that the commune was run by an assiduous cult who had been luring people to it for the past 20 years and either to brainwash them to join its ranks or turn them into what they called the Brethren. We had plenty of experience with the Brethren, though. We killed almost two dozen of them at our cabin. Basically, the cult thought that at some point we had seen too much too early. So they decided brainwashing us was a lost cause. So they just decided to let the brethren eat us. At this point though, it still left us wondering what that thing in the lake was. Emphasis on was, thanks to Herr Schnitzel Nazi. After the battle at our cabin, we sensed something was wrong with the commune immediately. Nazi senses were tingling once again, you could say. We were all worried, so we decided to play a hunch and have Mackenzie sneak into what was essentially the commune's prison, so that she could talk to the people that were held prisoner there. Now, you might be asking, why did we trust a nine-year-old with this mission? And it was simultaneously because she was a stealthiest, and we all didn't give a shit. Mackenzie found all of this information out from the prisoners, namely Phil who she found in one of the cells. Phil was already in the process of transforming into one of the brethren, but with what little sanity he had left, he told Mackenzie everything. He also begged her to kill him, which she did. Now, when I say that she did it, I mean she did it immediately. Right after he said the words, her knife was out and in his throat. No hesitation or anything. To make things even more psychopathic, she then went on a killing rampage in the prison, killing all the inmates to prevent them from being turned. Some of them were quite thankful for it, yes. But we also learned from the GM that some of the people she killed had absolutely no idea about what happens with the commune, and were only in there for minor infractions. Mackenzie really didn't care when she found out metagame style either. So, after we found this out, we decided to make a break for it, because we knew they'd try to finish the job. Insert one session of us basically setting as many buildings on fire as we could to distract them. And we made our escape in Chuck's old truck, and my Pinto cruising wagon. And, also as a middle finger, I set up every single landmine that I had along the only entrance and exit from the main area of the commune. So, to make a long story short, we eventually found a summer camp that was kind of like a co-ed version of the Boy Scouts. The camp counselors didn't like us being there, but one intimidate check from Coney and I later and they basically gave us full control of the camp. The president of the club's girlfriend, the one who played Chuck earlier, also ended up playing as Buddy, one of the camp counselors. He was a big dude with a full, thick, and bushy survivalist beard, and a meaner that reminded me of someone who was stoned off their ass. Only it was all the time. So that basically brings you up to speed. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video, but today's sponsor is brought to you by Neckbeardia's 3D printed models. Go ahead and check out the eBay store down below. We have tons and tons of really cool looking models. We've got it all from orcs, dwarves, the lizards and fish people. And yes, most of the sets you can get some big bitty bitches in with them. <laughs> and honestly, they're our biggest sellers. Yeah, by far. Yeah. All the models are printed and processed by us and it is by far the best way to help us out to do what we do. So go ahead and check them out below and just just look at this lizard lady with titties. She got big titties. <laughs> look at the titties! <laughs> By this point, we knew that we couldn't stay at this camp for long. Partially because it was on the other side of the lake from the cultist commune. So we could literally see where we once were. The beginning of the session really consisted of us trying to come up with a plan of action for our characters. How we could uncover more information on how we could stop whatever the cult was planning. All while the eldritch horrors have been harassing us and the kids. Don't worry too much about the kids though. Coney made sure to start training them as fervently loyal child soldiers. 
so we were better protected. Who will think of the children? I will think of the children. Left, right, yo, right, yo, right. We got our first lead the second night we stayed at the camp. I should clarify that this wasn't like a campsite or anything where everything was set up when we got there. It was like a camp that had been built years ago and had clearly been running for years. This meant structures like cabins, a mess hall, medical center, ranges, places to earn various merit badges, and of course the bathrooms. I believe that it was Senator Fister who decided to go to the bathroom, with Gobbledick waiting outside for him. I decided that my character also had to use the bathroom, so I went in there as well. Unfortunately, there were only toilets and no urinals. Herr Schnitzel Nazi refused to use toilets if he only had to pee, so instead, he went to piss in the sink. I think it was when I heard screaming coming from one of the toilets that we first realized that something weird was happening. Before I could even react, Gobbledick threw the door open and kicked in the door of Senator Dick Fisser's bathroom stall and tackling him mid-shit. Nothing was happening to him, however, because the screaming was coming from one of the younger children who was in the stall next to Senator Fister. While Fister was cursing out his security guard, I kicked open the other stall only to watch what was left of the kid being dragged down the tiny hole of the toilet, leaving a bloody mess there. Three sanity checks passed later and we were ready to act. We knew that the kid had to be dead. He was already small, even for his age. But to pull a kid through the hole meant that a couple of things needed to have been bent and broken. Before we could tell the others, another unnaturally long hand shot out of the toilet and grabbed Gobbledick by the throat, using immense strength to pull him head first into the toilet. That got us into a game of tug of war with Gobbledick's body, which we were rapidly losing. It was all we could do just to keep his head out of the water. When it became apparent that we were going to lose, I pulled out a combat knife that I kept on me and slashed away at the arm. Now, Herr Schnitzel Nazi, as a 92 year old man, is weak as fuck, but he still did enough damage for the toilet hand to decide that it wasn't worth it, so it slunk back into the toilet. We ran out of there to tell the others, and we decided this would be our best lead. But how could we follow the toilet hand? After stealing a uniform from a camper, I took out a hyper-realistic blow-up doll that I had in my cruising wagon and put the uniform on her. <laughs> I took out a hyper-realistic blow-up doll that I had in my cruising wagon for some unknown reason and put the uniform on her. <laughs> I'm... I made out with my blow-up doll Helga one last time before strapping half a cart of grenades to her and rigging the pins to be pulled when she got about halfway down the toilet. It's like a scene from fucking Tremors. I think the GM was getting tired of my car of crazy at that point right there. Half the toilets blew up and we heard a high-pitched monstrous scream come from inside. When we went in to survey the damage, we found that there was actually a massive gaping hole that led to the underground underneath the toilet. Buddy the camp counselor decided that he wanted to take point, and pulled out a 44 Magnum and a flashlight and jumped down the hole. A tunnel rat right after my own heart. Apparently he had the Magnum in case of bear attacks. We all followed him and found that this hole was recently carved. Imagine a cave, the sort that kind of snakes along for miles. That was basically what we were dealing with. Now, Herr Schnitzel Nazi was coming prepared this time. Now I had five grenades on me, and a flammenwerfer all with me. Figured the MG42 was too big and heavy for my feeble old man to carry on his own. We went on for a long while, with the cave kind of going on a downward angle. We also noticed things starting to get really wet, so we figured that we were underneath the lake at this point. Eventually, we came across a massive cistern, complete with stonework and statues of monstrous beings, but nobody was around. We saw writing along the walls, written in some kind of ancient alien language that we didn't bother taking a tracing of or anything. Figured it wasn't worth much. 
The cistern had about seven other paths snicking off in all different directions, so we spent the next five minutes trying to decide where to go next. That's when the Shagoth came. I'm assuming the Shagoth was the toilet hand here. It just sort of rose out of a massive basin filled with water, tentacles everywhere like a Japanese hentai. To make matters worse, about half a dozen of the brethren came to help it in the combat. Gobbledick and Mackenzie were both dragged off to die during the fight, and Coney used his summoned child soldier ability again, which did help. I was desperately using my Flaminverther on the Shagoth, but every time I caught part of it on fire, it would just move that part back into the water and extinguish it, not really dealing much damage. I knew that we needed something big to kill the Shogoth, and every time we killed enough of the brethren to focus fire on the fucker, more would just come. GM, you are a sadistic bastard. I ran up the stairs to the third level, where I noticed a particularly large stone statue of what I think was the monstrous creature we saw come out of the lake that first game. Deciding it was big enough, I went right for it. I think the GM didn't want me to have it be quite so easy, so he had one of the brethren crawl its way right along the wall right towards me. Herr Schnitzel Nazi just shouted at the thing. Spider-Man, is that really you? As if he were a starstruck fan. Spider-Man, is that really you? <laughs> Needless to say, the brethren was not amused and tackled me. Unfortunately for it, I pumped a couple shots into it for my bu oh humped never mind I humped a couple pu <laughs> god damn it unfortunately for it I humped a couple of shots into it for my belt buckle gun bet you forgot about that into where I think his dick used to be with that out of the way I went up behind the statue and started dousing it in flames now stone doesn't burn but fire does weaken its structure. And because the Nazis were just oh so smart as to put tar into the mix of their flamethrowers so that the flames stick to whatever they hit, the fire was all around the statue. That's when I rolled to throw all of my grenades at the statue and had them get caught right behind it and the wall. It should blow it straight off. One critical success later and the statue went off just as planned. It actually fell before I could throw all of my grenades, leaving me with one left again. I don't think I could have asked for a better shot. The statue landed right on top of the Shogoth and it just went squish. The rest of the brethren were easy enough to clean up after that, and we were left with just the Senator, Coney, Buddy, and myself. We weren't quite done with the session though. The remainder of us decided to go down the path which was the only one made of stone. Do you remember those scenes in Harry Potter where they're in the Ministry of Magic with those black stone blocks? That was essentially what the tunnel was made of. After a few hundred feet of walking, we came to a large room which looked like an old study. There were shelves upon shelves of ancient looking books and a single large desk in the middle of the room with papers and drawings of occult symbols and rituals all over it. Without hesitation, Buddy the camp counselor pulled out a massive bag of weed. Coney, Buddy, and I all took pieces of paper from the desk and rolled them in the joints, which we all started smoking. Senator Fister, however, refused to have any of the devil's cabbage. After getting stoned off of some good herb, we all began to stupidly look around at some of the books. As we were doing that, a group of some of the cultists from the commune came down to try and find out where all the noise down here was. Buddy, Coney, Senator Fister, and Coney's one remaining child soldier heard them coming and all ready themselves to fire down the hallway. Herr Schnitzel Nazi, on the other hand, was way too baked and decided that reading was better worth his time. What the fuck do all these words mean, you cocksuckers? I asked before reading a mangled version of one of the summoning rituals. When I did this, I accidentally summoned an eldritch demon of sorts, which manifested before us, right out of the smoke from the weed. I almost forgot to mention, there was so much smoke from the pot that the entire hallway was basically covered into stuff, drastically reducing visibility. It was damned convenient for us, because my demon just ran straight down the hallway and all we heard at the other end were a few gunshots and screams. 
When it was all cleared, we found the remains of what I think were at one point five separate people. Difference was that they had been spread. In celebration of a job well done, Coney and Fister decided to take some of the books with us while Buddy and I lit up again. This also caused me to inadvertently set the study on fire. Damned convenient, once again. And thus concludes the toilet hand. Coming up next in the adventures of Herr Schnitzel Nazi is Fire and Blood. Will we succeed? Find out in the next exciting post. And I'll be there to narrate it for you. Take it on home, Nickbeardia. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that rendition of Harshnet's Nazi. I think it's great. It's one of the, my favourite stories that we've ever done. And I think Garbage Militian is, honestly, it's top quality. I really enjoy it. I, lo- I love the accent. You know what I mean? I'm a bit of a sucker for it. So, like, if you guys are enjoying it as much as I am, definitely remember to subscribe. And, you know, you have to, like, subscribe, like, three times. You know, like, the third level. You know, the bell or whatever the fuck it's called. Click that, you know what I mean? And uh, like, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Keep up to speed with it. We try to upload them on Fridays and Saturdays. And uh, we'll see you guys later.